What's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're over here at Lightning Quick Glides. We got Anton over here. Go check him out on Facebook, Anton Morgan. That's the best way to get a hold of him. Uh, he done our transmission for us last time. I screwed it up, so we got Brock to bring it up here uh, last week. I didn't film while I was over there. I should have filmed and got his car on the channel a little bit. He's got an awesome car coming up. But he got he brought both of the transmissions up here. Um, Anton had not went through uh, our spare transmission yet, and so uh, the one that I threw together right before MPK. So we were going to get him. I'm gonna let him talk about what what he done real fast. And so now we've got two lightning quick glides and these things are awesome guys. Check it out. Go check out his Facebook, lightning quick glides, Anton Morgan. Get them to hook you up guys, appreciate it. We got twinsies. Oh yeah. Twinsie power glides. So um, this, okay, this one is the one that we had in the car. This was the one that we had for the spare that I messed up. And actually I messed up that one. I messed up, actually. <laughs> I can't remember. They're so, it's so confusing to me. So they, I screwed both of them up. Essentially, is what happened. Yeah, they, they were both unhappy. <laughs> they were both very unhappy. And this is the one that we had in the car this last time, where I screwed up the pressure valve uh, and I lost all the pressure. And so I'm gonna put a picture in here. Uh, it's real hard to see it on video, but he got a good picture of it. We think is the smoking gun. So, on why we didn't have any converter pressure. Yeah, when we dumped all the fluid off with a regulator, um, we didn't have lubrication back to the transmission. So basically it knocked out the back bushing in the pump, um, which then you really were losing. You had 45, I think, PSI. Right. The rest of it, you just it was just flowing by the bushing because it really hammered the bushing. The front bushing was okay because you are getting the fluid come to the front of it, but when right. you dumped off, it actually got the second bushing more because, and which makes sense. Right. If y'all remember, if y'all look back, the the transmission when we first took the, the Saturn out, transmission was shifting perfect and it was a little tight on the converter. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna take this little valve here and open the valve up to reduce the pressure. A couple things happened. I forgot the first thing the first time we took it out. I completely forgot to hook my sensor up. So I have no idea what my pressure was. And then I got screwed up in adjusting the valve and I went way loose basically. And it was just, it was just bypassing all the fluid. And so that's what killed that back bushing. And so then, cause the transmission was, and that's what I was telling Anton. I was like, dude, transmission will break your neck shifting. I was like, when it shifts, it's pop. I mean, it shifts hard. But it's like like riding through the pits, but on the track, it's just like the, it's just blowing through the converter. I think we had what uh, eighty six hundred RPM engine RPM and forty six hundred RPM drive shaft speed. No good. Like fifty percent slip in the converter. So I mean that was that was a bad deal. And so you know it's just I mean I screwed it up, guys. I mean that's all there is to it. And so we're not going to make that mistake again. All right, guys. So everybody knows that converter charge pressure is super important. I went for many years without even looking at it just guessing and we know if it's fluid in and fluid out kind of like we talked about and so if y'all remember y'all looked at a bunch of my old videos i have done a bunch of restrictors in um the the case and in the valve body and the pump i had dumps on it and when i first met anton anton he, he didn't really like none of that <laughs> and because it's hard on the transmission you know and and but converter pressure does make a difference on thrust bearings um, on the car and some some engines are more sensitive to it and yes. some, some are not um, good instance on like Donald's car uh, the other night when we were playing with it we're, we're struggling spooling it yeah. and um, his has got a Mark Mickey Turbo 400 it's got two dumps on it but it's got an internal dump and an external dump so when we dumped when I monitored the fluid pressure we had 19 PSI of converter charge pressure 19 and we were on a train break for seven eight seconds that means you ain't got no fluid going through the transmission for that amount of time yeah. and I, I tried it turning the valves off and it had 95 pounds of pressure which is 95 what's, what's the maximum is that about about right 100 is maximum like uh industry standard you really don't want more than that right um, you know and usually between 80 and 90 is kind of a happy spot for the average person Right, yeah. and I remember back in the day, like um, tur apparently turbo four hundreds or they put more pressure, and I know they push harder on crankshafts. That's what I've heard. That's what we've heard. Anton don't I'm do 
about it. That's all right. Anton's not a Turbo 400 guy. Me either. All I know is I like the power glides. I like the simplicity. Right. A lot lighter than a, uh, a Turbo 400. Lighter and more efficient. That's right. But, com but converter pressure makes a difference. So you want to monitor pressure. And so uh, you want to monitor it while you're electronically, ideally. I mean, you can put a mechanical gauge on it. Sure. And I'm going to put a mechanical gauge on it because it's a little easier for, to see when you're sitting there in the car. But uh, you need to monitor it going down track because the the natural slope of the power guide, the converter pressure, is is whatever it is. And then you let go of the trans brake and then it spikes up. Mm -hmm. And then it falls down as it goes. And then when you shift, it spikes back up. And then it falls back down again. That's what you want to see. <laughs> So that's the natural tendency of the converter, right? As it tightens up, it, it starts, it doesn't have as much fluid coming out of it. Yeah, as it couples. As it couples, It'll, there you go, that's the word. basically consume fluid as it couples. Mm. Right, so, but it's you can play, fluid. but you can manipulate that pressure some to to affect the the lockup and the stall of the, the converter. You don't have a huge window, I would imagine. I mean, I mean, you have a little bit of a window where it can manipulate some, yes. but I mean, it's not like you can, well, clearly if you lose all the pressure, then you get a 50% slip converter. At 45, <laughs> we're not happy. Right. So, I mean, you know, and if it's, if it's way too tight and the pressure jack's way too high up, then that's going to be a problem on your motor. Yeah. So that's going to be, uh, influence your motor more. So, uh, we think we, we got it fixed and we know what we did wrong. I did wrong. Uh, nothing that Anton did. It was, uh, my screw up that I did. And so now we've got two transmissions that are lightning quick glides and these things are going to be awesome. So that one's going to go behind the small block. This has got my, um, my, my more seasoned parts. Is that, is that the best yeah, well <laughs> My well seasoned. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> that was the stuff that was in the reed case. Um, we like the reed case a little bit better because it seems like the aluminum's a little bit different. It seems like it's a little bit lighter as well. A little bit dimensionally more accurate. Right. Yeah, it's a little better case. So, um, the, we took all his good stuff out of that one and put it in this one. Cause that one's got all new planetaries in it. It's got all new stuff. It's his. This has got, um, because I couldn't afford right now to, to go all through this one and put any planetaries and stuff in it. I'll show you the picture of um, the, the, what is that? The, the drive gear from the sun gear? Yeah. Um, flange gear. Yeah, yeah flange gear. So y'all remember when we broke, we broke this one at MPK, broke the input shaft. And, um, and I'm confident. I don't know if we talked about that. I know why that one broke is because I did a huge converter feed restrictor in, um, in the case of it. I reduced it down to, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. And at 100%, I, I, it, it locked up. And that's what you saw was fixing to happen to this. Yeah. The bushing was bound all up and locked up. And because of, I mean, I just did no fluid. I mean, yeah. I, I starved the fluid. That's the problem with dumps. That's dumps. the problem, right. Dumps are essentially starving the transmission for lubrication. Right. You know, you're losing the fluid that should be going back through to lubricate your your drum, your your planetary, all your your parts. And so for short periods of time, like a second or two might not be that big a deal, but when you're doing it a ton or if you're putting those big restrictors into cases like I had, I was telling Anton, uh, right before that thing broke, uh, when I would pull it down in gear, it was like the car wouldn't move. There was no clunk, no nothing. It's like the converter had no fluid in it. And then I would have to rev it a little bit to get the car kind of, it almost felt like an old, like a, like a straight drive. Like it was, I mean, it's just no fluid. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I went a little too small on that, that feed. And then it broke. And then I didn't go as small when I put that one back together. But um, I still was overheating parts like crazy. Like he couldn't get the wedding ring apart. Um, this is all out of the one that um, I put together. And it was it was toast and stuff. I mean, oh God, it smells burnt right there. Yeah. I can smell it. Yeah, now it's on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anton, I appreciate you getting everything together. I think we're on the right track. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got them, we got them happy now. Right, so we're gonna stick that thing in. So we'll stick, um, we're gonna stick the pretty one in. So the pretty one is the, the better one now. So we're gonna stick the pretty one in to open exposed right now. And I think we're gonna be good to go. Now, Anton's been working on, uh, he's got a street truck that is carbureted right now. And uh, it's nitrous, but he's working on another project. I'm going to go show you all that project real fast. Anton, I appreciate you getting me set up. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Uh, go check him out. Lightning Quick Glides again, Anton Morgan. Uh, Facebook, that's the best place to get you yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, Anton Morgan on Facebook. Yeah. All right, man, appreciate it. Let's go check out your hot rod. All right.
Hey guys, so this is Anton's street truck right now. So that one's pretty cool. What are, what motor do you have in that one? It's a 383, pretty plain, little 383 Nitrous motor. Sounds really good. And he's just doing some good work with that. But this one right here, dude, this caught my eye when you walk in. What do you call this one? It's Tater. Tater, instead of Mater. Instead of Mater, this is Mater's cousin. Tater. <laughs> Mater's bigger cousin. <laughs> this thing is, oh, dude, I am digging this. What actually is it? It's a 1939 Dodge COE. 1939. And it's going to have an LS motor. God, look at this. Look at this. Sitting on top of it. Look at the chassis. Ladder bar. Dude, this thing looks like it would be fun to drive. <laughs> this will be a really cool project. Yeah, and it's going to have an independent rear suspension. I just haven't changed around. I built that, but then I'm, I change my mind all the time. So it's going to have a hot IRS system. I already have it back there for it. Oh, my goodness. So it's going to be independent front and rear suspension. LS turbo. Uh -huh. be a neat little truck. This will be bad to the bone. I wonder what it'll weigh. It actually looks like it, it might not be that bad. It's light. <laughs> right? Uh, my wife and two little teenage boys and me, lifted the cab and stuck it on here so wow. it's not real heavy and, and i mean it is a full new tubular chassis box square man so you built all that stuff that's yeah. all custom stuff yeah i built that a long time ago actually the progress hasn't been what it needs to be and make five bead lock my wheels a 18 inch wheels yeah god those look good too Wow, that is freaking, dude! This is this is a cool project. It's gonna be neat, yeah. Hopefully, this... I can get back on doing some more work to it. Man, that thing right there, that motor sitting right there under it is is wild. Yeah, it has engine setback. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Setback great, no prep style. Wow, I mean that is unbelievable. It is. It really is crazy. This is in, this is insane. So this is another project you got. You got a lot of projects. So this is this is going to be the race truck, though. Yeah, this is going to be the fast one. I hope where I can come play with you guys a little bit. Right? Yeah. Man, I am digging it. All it all this one starting work. Got to get the cage and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Man, that is clean. What's the what's this one going to be? It's either going to be big block nitrous or uh, a new gen LT uh, supercharged, um, which is kind of leaning towards that. Uh, there's a lot of that kind of coming out now. And, right. And running really well, so really thinking about that. That'll be nice, man. That the LT supercharge would be really cool. This is this is really, really nice stuff up here. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate it again. Hit Anton up on Facebook, uh, Lightning Quick Glides, Anton Morgan. Give him a call, let him hook you up and uh, build you a power glide. Oh yeah. Power glide in the world. <laughs> power glide in the world, that's funny. And that turns me when did power glides first come out? In the sixties? Yep. Uh, 1962 aluminum power glide till 1973. They were a little ahead of their time. They didn't. They didn't realize that they were going to be able to uh, withstand 2,000 horsepower, did they? They had the cast irons before that, but nobody plays with them. The aluminum ones, yeah. I mean, millions of them. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. It's insane. And he can get you any power level you want. 500 horsepower to a couple thousand horsepower. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. See you. Yep.